We're knee deep on the disassembly of the Hemi Coronet convertible. Remember, that is a seven figure car. So everything's going good now, but it needs to continue to go good. So what we're looking at right now, whoever built the car back in the 70s or early 80s when it was put together, actually did a phenomenal job because you remember there was nothing available. Oh, that yeah. poor guy had to go to everything that was available. He couldn't go on the internet and just look up and see where the marking was supposed to be here or the marking was supposed to be there. He, he, no, he could probably get a lot of NOS parts. Probably a knowledgeable guy, but he could get NOS parts, which he couldn't get today. But you're still talking about a, an incredibly rare car. You know, it's kind of cool because when I was growing up, I mean, I read about cars like this, Hemi cars, four speeds, convertibles. I never dreamed I'd be working on one. I always thought the Coronet RT was a good looking car. Like, like Plymouth, their decorated car, their celebrated car was the GTX, which is a standard 440 or 426 Hemi available with both an automatic or a four speed. But to me, the GTX just never did it. I mean, it's, the 67 looks like Royal's crap box. RT, so that's ugly. The 70 GTX started looking better because it looks like a 70 Roadrunner quite a bit. Uh, got the air grabber hood, got some cool things on it. But I mean, you get into the Coronet, I mean, look at this car. Look at the crazy hood scoops. You, I mean, these aren't just hood scoops that are set in there that are non-functional. These are functional. They grab the air out of this Ram Charger right here. If you look at this big old orange box here, it closes down on a very special air cleaner and it draws cool air in through those scoops into this plenum over here onto this and into the actual engine itself. I mean, that's some pretty cool stuff. Simulated quarter scoops. I mean, that's just off the charts. That's as, as much stuff as you could throw on the outside of a car. Bumblebee stripe, take a look at the dash. This is one of the things that's interesting though about this car. This car has a TikTok tack, which is the N85. That's right here. They call that a TikTok tack because it has a clock in it on the inside and the outer perimeter is a tachometer. This one's actually optioned with it. Most of the cars today have it because people put them in them, but they don't all have an N85 code on the fender tag to support it. Um, back when the guy built this car, if you look at this, this is just a cover because that's all that was available back when the guy put the car together. They didn't have, you couldn't call up Dashpad Pros and say, hey, I need a nice 68, 70B body or, well, they're actually different, but say I got a 70B body and I need a dash pad for it. He can, he can send it right out to you and it's got the right material, the right, uh, texture, the right grain, the right everything. But back then, all you had was this hard plastic rigid uh, cover. The, the little short history on this is uh, Brett Torino had it, had bought the car, I don't know when, and I certainly don't know for how much, but it's an expensive car to put in his collection because he only collects the best of the best. Um, and they went out to start it a couple of years ago and it dropped its oil pressure and uh, started to make a uh, knocking noise. So, and it, they thought that it was a spun bearing. So that's when they reached out to me and said, well, listen, it's got a dent in the fender. It's got some updates that need to be done to it. Let's just send it up to market graveyard cars. That's how it kind of ended up here because it, you know, if, if it hadn't had the dent, if the plastic trim was a little better on the inside, like on the A pillars or it had the nice dash pad on it and it ran like a champ, I don't know if it'd be worth investing the extra money into, but right now it is. Thank you.